Remember when lawyers and politicians went crazy trying to ban Grand Theft Auto because violent video games are bad and they're responsible for real-life violence or something? Because apparently there was no such thing as violence before their creation. In the early 2000s, this was constantly in the news. It was silly back then, and it's silly now. And somehow, this sort of thing is still going on. Unfortunately. According to the Chicago Sun-Times, representative for the state of Illinois, Marcus Evans, wants to amend a law that prevents certain games from being sold to minors. Instead of the way it works now, where a store can't sell an M-rated game to a minor, now they just want to completely ban the sale of all violent video games. The reason for this is because of a recent surge in carjackings in the Chicago area. In January of this year alone, 218 carjackings occurred either in the city of Chicago or in neighboring townships. And in 2020, 1,400 carjackings occurred citywide. That's more than double the amount of carjackings that occurred in 2019. This also makes Chicago the carjacking capital of America because this is the highest number of stolen cars in any major U.S. city. So, carjackings are a pretty serious problem for the city, huh? And banning violent video games across the whole state is apparently the answer, or part of it. And they haven't just proposed this, they're also changing the state law's definition on what a violent video game is. According to the state of Illinois, a violent video game is now one in which players control a character that is encouraged to perpetuate human-on-human -human violence in which the player kills or otherwise causes serious physical or psychological harm to another human or animal. So, does this make Destroy All Humans a non-violent game that's allowed for sale within Illinois? Because it's not human on human, it's alien on human, so that should be okay, right? Or how about Sim City, where I can literally be God and do this? Now, with GTA, I mean, this franchise has only been out since 1997, and there hasn't even been a new entry since 2013, so of course only now it's a major cause for concern. I'm sure that some would still like to argue that people who played the games when they were younger then grew up to act out what they saw in the games, but there's already been studies that show that violent games do not cause violent tendencies in people. There's been quite a few of them, actually. And hell, if this guy who wants a ban knew anything about GTA Online, he'd know that now they actively encourage you to buy cars, not take them. I feel like there are some other, more serious things to address when it comes to this topic, and when it comes to answering the question of why these carjackings are happening in Chicago. The answer is not just, oh, someone played a violent video game that allows you to steal cars if you want, it must be rubbing off on players. This isn't good. Because why is a carjacking that's portrayed in a game any worse than it is in a movie? Maybe because it's interactive, and people probably see it as worse because you can push a button and make it happen. But pushing a button isn't at all like actually dragging someone out of their car. You're really just pushing a button and watching an animation play out. And hell, why is it always GTA that gets targeted? You almost never see anyone complaining about Saints Row. Except for a few officials in New York years ago, back in the 2000s, again. Which takes us back to the fact that this is like something straight out of the 2000s. It feels like such a bizarre argument to make, especially nowadays. Especially with how much gaming has grown, and the fact that video games exist outside of Chicago. GTA is really popular around the world, so wouldn't there be a sharp rise in carjackings worldwide if it was really having a negative influence on players? Not just in one city? And when you realize that there are a lot of external factors as to why violent crime occurs in Chicago, and nationwide for that matter, then deciding that video games are the problem and should be banned just comes off as out of touch. It's almost like the satire you would hear in a video game about the complaints that their own industry would face. Like in Saints Row's talk radio station featuring two guys talking about violent video games and how badly they think it's affecting the youth of Stillwater. This is from 2006, and it's kind of sad that 15 years later, the satire is not going to be lost on anyone listening to this today. By the way, since we're on the subject of Illinois, I felt like I should mention that four out of the last eight governors of Illinois were immediately sent to prison after leaving office due to corrupt activities during their time as governor. I wonder what games they played. Probably cheated at Monopoly or something. Maybe we should try to connect the dots between that and bribery, fraud, racketeering, try to get that banned. Anyway, enough of the negativity. What kind of positive influence has GTA had on you? Stuff that you would have missed out on if a bunch of random political figures actually had their way. Pretty much introduced me to all kinds of music, provided me with countless hours of entertainment, and I once wrote an entire character analysis based on the relationship between Nico and Roman for a final project for a class, and I got an A on it. Well worth it. <laughs> Bum 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 b